the streaming world of what he believes to be of quality. But there is, unseen by most, an episodic horror-based TV show. A show that still holds up. A show called Tales from the Dark Side. Perfection. That's what that act is. Absolute perfection. Every vocal nuance, every move, every gesture. Hey, that's why this audience keeps coming back to see me time and time again. They recognize that. Hey, what's up and welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side, the podcast where we talk about Tales from the Dark Side, the 80s horror-based television show created by George Romero and Richard Rubenstein. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. Today we're talking about The Impressionist, directed by Armand Mastriani, with a story by M. Coleman Eastman and a teleplay by Haskell Barkin from September 26, 1985. Made it to season two, boys. Here we are. We are in season two, finally. It feels real good. Yeah. (laughs) I'm feeling real good about it, guys. Made it through season one. Now we're back. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, get get your rubber faces ready, guys. (laughs) Because, uh... Wow. You don't really gotta try that hard, because this guy's not trying that hard either, honestly, with his impressions. He's just like... Very low-hanging fruit. Well, he's doing his best. He's, well, yeah, he is, he is. And Chuck McCann is fucking great. I mean, we'll talk about him, yeah, but he like, is, he's he is. really good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, before we kick this all off, uh, do you want to talk a little bit, or do you want to give the synopsis of this uh, episode? Yeah, so the official synopsis from Fangoria back in 1986 <laughs> is uh, government officials hire a famed impressionist to help them communicate with an alien using his mime talents the performer is able to establish a bond of friendship with the bulbous-headed space creature. There we go. <laughs> Pretty much. That's, yeah, that's yeah, the episode. Yeah. That's the episode. Thanks. Hey, let me ask you a question. <laughs> what does this remind you of? Uh, definitely not Oliver Hardy oh. and Stan Laurel, that's for sure. Reminds me of Thursday. <laughs> Some bad yeah, jokes right off here, the Wednesday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday. It's like we start off pretty quick here, going right into like this goofy uh, I really territory. Like, so we got Chuck McCann here. Oh, he's been all sorts of stuff. He's been in a ton, ton of stuff. He plays Spiffy Remo. Yes, in this, which yep. uh, that's just like something I like to say a lot. It's a good name, Spiffy. It Remo. rolls off the tongue. It, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a good one. He's a stand-up comedian. Impre- well, he's the impressionist TM. Yep. Um, so he does all of these different, uh, he's on stage and he's doing like, you know, the wizard from the wizard of Oz yeah. and he's doing Laurel and Hardy, Laurel and Hardy like which, back to back, which is kind of cool. I think that's what he did like before this episode and a lot of like in his career. Oh yeah. Oh, he okay. actually did a lot of like, imp- like impersonations of Laurel and Hardy. No shit. He's a, he's, he's a, a perfect guy for this role. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. He's also a big voice actor too. Oh yeah. All sorts um, of stuff. Jeez. He, he, it's like. A long list. He's done a ton of cartoons. He did Pinky and Blinky from Pac Man, like oh, the wow. ghost, like yeah. the cartoon. Ah. Uh, he had, uh, when I checked, it was uh, like 176 credits. It's insane. Everything. Dude. He's been in every, like DuckTales. DuckTales. A uh, bunch of Looney Tunes stuff. Yeah. Uh, what else is he? Oh, he's Leatherneck and G.I. Joe. He's been in Fantastic Max, which is a really good cartoon that I okay. like. Um, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Uh, he's Mayor Grody and the Toxic uh, Avengers oh, cartoon. Right. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and he's Beefsteak. In the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes cartoon. Oh, my God. Um, But he's in, like, other movies, too. He's in, like, Hamburger, the motion picture, and he's in a bunch of Mel Brooks stuff. Oh, okay. He's in... um, I've probably seen him in stuff, then, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's the guy in Robin Hood Men in Tights when when Cary Elwes goes up, and he's like, he's like, "Uh, citizens, lend me your ears! And he, like, takes it off and throws it at him. (laughs) Yeah, okay, okay. Um, And he's also... He also did one of the Amoeba Boys in... uh, the Power Girls. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I thought was cool. Yeah, so he's done all sorts of stuff. The biggest one, though. Spiffy Remo. No. Wow. <laughs> he's the high guy guy in the right guard commercial opposite oh. Horace X. Oh, that's weird. Right, right. Oh, that's strange. So, like, when we did when yeah. we did the False Prophet episode and we brought up Horace X, like, who did the voice? Yeah. The, the, the guy inside the mirror is... The guy from this episode. Okay. Right. I yeah. think you mentioned that on the Horse X episode. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. That's just fucking bizarre. Yeah, Last episode weird. of the first season, first episode of the second season. That's yeah. a weird that how that just came together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just grabbed Pittsburgh locals. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Here we go. Exactly. 
<laughs> 30, 30 bucks. And like earlier on, I'm kind of joking when I'm saying he's doing this like crappy routine. Like it, has, it does have some talent to it. I mean, he's flip flopping from Laurel to Hardy. It's kind of fun. It's just yeah. I'm like, all right, man, that's that's the best you got. And then like he's going backstage, like all proud of himself. And even his manager is like, you need some new material. Yeah. Like this is getting fucking old. Pudgy. <laughs> Pudgy. He's well, eating right a fucking we... orange. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this whole thing. <laughs> well, right when we start, like one thing to note here is yeah. like going into season two now. Mm. This is like kind of a big deal because now we have like a bigger budget. Oh, it feels 100%. Like, and, like there's much more right production away. value. We're syndicated now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Straight up. So right here in this club scene is the most like extra people we've yeah. had in an episode yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's with, a... the, with the crowd with everything mm-hmm. going on yeah. the camera movement like that's I didn't even think of that but that's a really great mm-hmm. ob- observation absolutely and especially the stuff at the end oh yeah when we get to yeah. it and even like and even like the costumes and like the special effects too yeah but we have like a whole bunch of different locations and it's not just like one or two rooms yeah, yeah. it's like now let's see we have um, there's maybe like Six or seven. There's the club. There's the Sets. back room at the club. There's the 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 lab, the base, yeah, and then the, the base the, lab, and then the lab, and then the the room where they talk to the alien and stuff. Yeah. So it's there's crazy. all sorts of. So the production value is much higher going into season two. Maybe not for all of season two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But right out the gate here, we're we're off to a good start. And there's stuff outside too that yeah. we like at the end. Yeah. Yeah. They're stretching their legs here with oh, the yeah. production value. So yeah, Spiffy Rumo is an impressionist, right? And it, we find out that he used to work for, he used to be like uh, in the military. Okay, shady past, shady yeah. past. So so there's this guy. So Spiffy Rumo is down on his luck, and he wants like a raise from from his uh, manager Pudgy or whatever for this club. And he's like, the money just not there. I don't know what to tell you, Spiffy is whatever's. Now is this he, club like a mob front? Oh, it totally. Oh, or it's something. Got it, yeah, hundred percent. Right? Yeah. Or like wannabe at yeah, least. Something, yeah. yeah. Spiffy's not in on the, uh, the uh, he doesn't get a cut. Because he's like, I'll tell you to shove it. I'll tell you what you can do with this club. Uh, but this guy's been watching him the whole time when yeah. he's doing his stand-up. Now that guy's making me nervous. The guy in the yellow shirt. Yeah, makes give, my give thumbs itch. Creeps. Oh, how about the orange? We got to talk about the orange. Yeah, well, okay. So Pudgy's okay. eating an orange. <laughs> and, he's got, and he's like cutting it with like a, a, a coke nail. A pocket knife? Yeah. I thought he had got a coke nail. He's eating it. He out does or have a coke nail, yeah. but it's like he's like cutting it and like licking it, dripping all over fingers. the floor. <laughs> it's sort of a weird. Uh, it's like the walking Godfather. into somebody's room. It's yeah. Like Denethor <laughs> eating that fucking oh, orange. No, no. or, or the, the tomato. tomatoes. Yeah. yeah, but this guy's been watching him the whole time, and uh, he's wearing. He's like, you see that guy in the Aloha shirt? <laughs> Makes my, my totally thumbs undercover. Itch. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But like. Why would you send this guy? He's like total sore thumb. He's got like this twitch that he does. Yeah. It's he's like he's like uncle wants you. I I, I mean everybody needs a job. Even there's there, there's even bad uh, DEA agents. Right, but when you go undercover, you want to be undercover, not like, not stick out. Well, right? like what did you just say? He, he went to go recruit the guy who's referring to Uncle Sam, where the government is just uncle. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's got this guy's weird. <laughs> too, yeah. Too many years of deep undercover. <laughs> Too many experimental it's like, uh, drugs. Like Jeffrey Combs and the Frighteners. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's wow. That's like a perfect way to put right? that. Yeah. yeah. So he goes in the back and he's like, he's like, hey, uh, excuse me, Spiffy, Uncle wants you. We need you for like a secret program or whatever. And he's like, I don't think I have much of a choice, do I? And he's like, not really. Yeah, they take him past like the umbrella facility. Fucking metal beast is oh, in there somewhere. A hundred percent. There's all sorts of like every other room is some different yeah. experiment. Yeah. Cabin yeah. in the woods. They're they're building oh, yeah. out that whole fucking the, yeah. uh, merman's being designed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's in there with like his flight suit. He's like getting shown around. Like, all right, this is what we want you to do. Yeah, there's yeah. Uh, we have an alien, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's just some like school basement. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's threw, like, a like a red sticker on the wall. <laughs> like, oh, it's a government basement. Yeah. It's like a dentist office. Yeah. They but sell it well. They sell it well. That's yeah. what's so great about it, though. So we get introduced to this doctor uh, played by Bobby Chico. And uh, he's in a ton of shit. He's in Ghoulies 4 as um, What's-His-Face's partner, uh, the main guy from the first movie. Yeah. We'll talk about Ghoulies 4 at another, at another yeah, time. Yeah, at some point, yeah. But Maniac Cop 3, Wavelength, Splash, uh, and The Supernaturals, which Armand Mastriani actually yep. directed. All ah. sorts of connections here. And then also, I mean, jumping ahead a little bit, yeah. but there's another character we're about to get into that was also in Maniac Cop 3. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I did, I missed so, this one. So it's like everybody went on to do Maniac Cop 3, I guess. whether that's a good thing or bad. <laughs> I think it's funny as hell because like Bobby DeChico was also in 1941 
Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and something else that like Spielberg directed yeah. and Zeme- and is a, a Zemeckis production and a Spielberg production yeah. and he's doing now he's here. <laughs> I mean, the dark side. James Cameron, what he did Piranha too. So well, yeah. yeah. So the whole the whole basic thing is that they want they bring Spiffy in because he's like the master impressionist. Now they've been trying to communicate with this alien, and the alien has access to fusion power, and they want to harness that power and kind of like talk to this thing and like make a make a deal with it. Right. The problem is the alien is dying because he can't exist in our atmosphere. So they're running out of time to fi- to crack the code. Just feed it some Reese's pieces. Yeah. <laughs> This is some fucking E.T. shit. You're not getting there. I mean, he could. Right? I think that's what killed E.T. in the long run. The beer and the Reese's Pieces. Yeah, maybe. The way this alien communicates is not like traditional, just like a language that they can't understand. They have a translator, which trans... This fucking thing is called Hofgosh, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And he speaks Hofgoshian. Yeah, it sounds like a German... Like yeah. dinner, they're like explaining this to Spiffy Rima, like like yeah, uh, and then he doesn't really communicate well. And uh, I tried to like talk to him, and he like did this to my face. <laughs> he's got a band aid on his face. Yeah. He's like, what happened to you? Yeah. And then like Spiffy Rima was getting a little nervous. He's like, well, oh, this is this is like nothing. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> he's like, you're gonna do it right. And he's like, ah, uh, okay. There's, there's nothing to worry about, Spiffy. We we totally have faith in you yeah. that you're gonna talk to this thing because the, okay so the way it communicates is it doesn't just right well it does talk and he has like a translator that he puts on his head with like this little pocket thing yeah it's like half verbal and like half but non-verbl it's like, through like movement it's like body language yeah. and the way that it's and it's like <laughs> and the sounds it, uses. it creates some of the most unintentionally great comedy oh, okay. i've ever <laughs> seen and and Man, it like sounds like a dig against the show, and maybe it is a little bit, but like I was laughing, and I don't know if that was what they were going for, but like when he's trying to talk to this thing, and he's like, like fucking Zoidberg, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, is this supposed to be taken seriously? So, um, they show him the tapes. Well, right, and first, he's, and he's yeah. like, and he's like, and he's like, he's like wrong, and he's like, good, good ice, Spiffy, yeah. you're, you're the man for the job. And it's like you got these like scientists in the lab with <laughs> Hofgosh, yeah, trying to mimic Getting, like, it, punched in the yeah. face by this like, thing, just like being all weird and trying to commu- you know, mimic what it's doing. The second they get it wrong, it just slaps it him just across slaps the face, him. Yeah. and they like, they like, they press the the uh, the Bigelow's last smoke alarm, yeah, and the thing, like, button freaks out. Yeah. So Spiffy studies the tapes, and he goes in to talk to this thing. And like he has this communicator on, and he's doing the movements, and he's like, he's like, don't be afraid, I'm here to help you. Yeah. And he's like talking to this thing and trying to get it to respond. So we get like a time jump to where he's been working on this thing for months now. And he's like, I'm not close. I'm almost it's like the talking funny to him. thing is, like he goes in there at first, he's like, oh yeah, he's kind of doing the thing. Yeah. But then he goes off and kind of like improvises. Yeah. He's like, he's he stood like, up. No, he's not doing that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Doing? Well, you got you're about to get slapped. Because yeah. they got the one way mirror, and he's like getting like kind of like either nervous or not sure if it's working. So he like stands up and looks back through the mirror, and then like hogwash is like whatever the fuck its name <laughs> Let's is. Let's go with that. Yeah. Yeah. It is like notices like ah. And he like gets like slapped in the face, and he's like, "Why did you stop and look at the mirror?" He's oh, like, you, "Well, you, I don't, uh, I, I don't know." But anyway, give me another chance. I'm this close. He's like, "You stood up. You broke your concentration." And uh, so he goes in there, and he's like, "Because the, because the dude with the twitch is about to pull the plug on the whole operation." Right. He's like, "That's yeah. it. You're done. Get get the fuck out of here." Look at these papers I got. Yeah, he's like, you're about to, <laughs> "These are gonna the, your military mistakes are gonna be out in the open." Oh. Right. Yeah, they blackmail. They blackmail. Oh, well, that's like in the beginning. Right. Yeah. They blackmail him because uh, he's done some like dishonorable discharge yeah. or something right. like that. Right, Spiffy Remo, because he's like not sure if he's going to initially do it because yeah. he's like, well, this is a lot of work. I got to work with this alien. I'm not Robin Williams because he clearly doesn't exist in this universe because they would have hired him instead. Yeah. Uh, just Sean's internal monologue coming out. <laughs> Yeah, he has like no choice but to like cooperate. Yeah, so. I mean, it's a fucking alien for God's but it's, sake. It's also like the military. What, are they gonna break the neuralizer out if you say no? Well, it's also the military. Like, I'm I'm fully expected them to just blow his brains out after this whole affair anyway. Yeah, like, they got so many of the 
the room that blows brain out like tele- telekinetically like scanners or something the second he <laughs> okay, walks right. out probably spiffy gets frustrated he's like he's like no i'm doing this i can do this i can do this he takes off like the headset and the mm. translator and he goes into the room and he literally <laughs> is speaking like and he's like speaking Hafgashi into this thing um, and the fucking arm walks out and he like peaks. and he like shows him the, the computer and he's yeah, like and hovers he's like, over yeah. with his hand yeah and then the thing like stands up straight and this big light comes out behind him yeah. and he like types in, he like gives us access to fusion <laughs> yeah. power yeah. and they let it's him So like, yeah, here's my Wi-Fi password. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what really happened Basically. like recently in the, you know, because we literally just apparently found out how to create fusion power. Mm-hmm. They're, they're damn close. Yeah. What, do we have hog, is there a hogwash somewhere in America it, helping out the scientists figuring out how to get that right. thing going? Well, we have to really hand it to Spiffy Remo. For for helping yeah. us out with yeah. on that one, he was he's a hell of a guy. You Salute know? to you, Spiffy, wherever <laughs> American <is>. hero. <laughs> Good night, Spiffy Remo, wherever you are. Yeah. So he gets released, and I guess they didn't like pay him or whatever because he's back at the club again. Yeah. Yeah. Pat on the back, Uncle Sam sends a card. Yeah, he's got a fucking it. NDA a mile long the that he can't yeah. say anything about it. Pudgy's about to go out of business, <laughs> so he's like, "Here, take all the money you yeah. want." Uh, he's back. You know, Spiffy's back, and he's back, baby. But he feels empty inside. You know. He really, he really, you know. Well, he had that like profound, like sensory overload. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. With that and like sp- literally mimicking another species and like mm-hmm. talking to it and communicating with it. I mean, that's got to be pretty mind blowing. I mean, put yourself in his shoes. But then going you know, he doesn't back, have anything else going on anyway. But then right? going back to a bit that's like forty years old that you're still doing over and over again. Right. I mean, I understand. No, yeah, I get. He's doing Laurel and Hardy it, jokes in the eighties. Yeah, I mean, no, it's funny, but like he's been doing them for so long, that, and he's, that's my point. He's finally, yeah. sick of yeah. it, you know. After like having his eyes open to like what else? Yeah, is like what yeah. else is in the universe? Dude, he had like, like his fucking martyr's moment. Like <laughs> yeah. the tears ran down his eyes. Right. We didn't see that part. <laughs> he needs that... another hit of juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when that light hit him. Yeah, exactly, Chris. Yeah. yeah. So he's kicking his can down the road, like after <laughs> his show, and he's all like bummed out and stuff. And then all of a sudden, this giant UFO comes down. <laughs> With this, all these bright lights and like the 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 whole platform comes down. You hear the music. <laughs> the little finger oh, the comes out. Yeah, yeah. But it's like that shitty Hofgosh hand <laughs> that like doesn't articulate <laughs> with like it. That, yeah, just goes like he literally fucking beeps him like that. Right? He does. He does. And then you he see the very mold on, on the hands. Yeah, it's all veiny. Yeah. Um, Painted in a rush. They talk to him and they're like, eh, yeah. Eh, <laughs> Come on, a spiffy. And he, he fucking. I don't know why I'm laughing so much because they look—they're playing it so straight, but it's just the shit coming out of their yeah. mouths is just so silly. It's goofy. It def- it's definitely goofy. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Their mouth look like a butthole. Like they're just yeah, like. Yeah. One- by the way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they take they take Spiffy in, into space, and I guess he goes on adventures with them. And that's it. And credits. It's See you later. See you yeah. later. Yeah. Spiffy. Yeah. Spiffy. Adios. <laughs> Spiffy's going to space. But like, they, what's that gag in The Simpsons? He went back to his planet. The, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the card game. <laughs> Spiffy went back to his home planet and died on the way there. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> he, he didn't die. He just went home. <laughs> yeah. Died a happy man with uh, his dick inside that thing's mouth. Oh right? my god! Uh, Imagine like what happens to Spiffy then? They're like, yeah, come on in, and yeah. they're like doing all experiments. And Spiffy. Then what? They make him. They chain him up like Space Jam and make him do stand up oh routines. Oh my god! And like half oh. He's uh, doing the Laurel and Hardy. They're eating it up. So what did, what did we think of this episode? I don't think it's very good. <laughs> no. I, I think there's a concept there. And I actually think the makeup, even though I'm busting on it a little bit, I do think the alien does look kind of cool. It's different. But uh, yeah, I didn't like this one. The main guys, he's he's fine. He's kind of funny, actually. Uh, I, I do like the Laurel and Hardy joke, even though I'm making fun of it. Like, I'm like, all right, all right cool. He switches the hat or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I could definitely have not done with it. This is a weird one to kick your season off with. <laughs> and I mentioned on the false prophet that like, for me, like, I know, like, I think Joe, you liked that episode and I forget Chris, if you did or not, but it's okay. I liked, it's like yeah, ideas of it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but it yeah. was like, I, I said on that episode, like, that's a weird one to end with. Cause like, if you're watching that, like in the eighties, like when it first aired, like, yeah, you'd probably be like, all right, I'll still give the next one a, a chance. Cause I liked enough episodes, but like, what if you saw just that? And then this one. I don't know. You'd be like, man, this show fucking sucks. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe not that it fucking sucks, but like, you might be like, wow, this isn't as good as I heard, I guess. Is right. What I mean, and I just thought it was an odd one to kick it off with, but uh, didn't hate it. Just just like I said, wouldn't skip it. But I'm just kind of like, eh, it was it was, a, it was an episode. Yeah, 
I think like the saving grace here is like because of how weird it is. And it's like mm-hmm. it taps into like what the show can be. Yeah. It's like give us weird ideas whether they land or not. It's like that's the beauty of doing these anthologies. It's like and I, I think I say it's like every other episode. <laughs> sure. It's, it's OK. It's like, like it's we're going to have. That, yeah. yeah. But that like really is the beauty of doing these like s- different stories every week where it's like, all right, we get an alien now. It's like, cool. <laughs> is the episode good? It's like, it's well, all right. It's OK. I like it. <laughs> but I, I'm aware of like it not being like amazing sure no 100 it's entertaining i think yeah i think another thing i'll just say like that that because we talked about this on a wrap-up episode a little bit like the comedy in this series and sometimes like it it, it, it they nail it and sometimes they don't and this is i think a case where it's like i think i even said this earlier but like it was this trying to be a comedy episode I, I feel like it had to be at least like on the on the dl if nothing else because it's just like come on man like find an alien how does it talk that's you know could yeah. be done a billion different ways this is just how they decided to tackle it but it's just that was so weird that yeah. was just so whack well, besides the stand-up there aren't really any jokes in it right i mean the alien being goofy and making weird sounds it's like it's funny to us yeah but it's like it's i don't really think they were trying to be like right over the top they could have made it way silly oh yeah 100 yeah. percent. which it, thankfully they didn't not, not right. it wasn't yeah. it wouldn't yeah if you're laughing at it i don't think it was intentional that's what i'm saying like i don't know like yeah I, I, it's a good episode to laugh off. at because i mean all, all the times we've talked about it yeah. and, like saying half gosh yeah and, like, half joking about the alien spiffy remo and all yeah. that stuff um i like this episode it's not it's not it's not like an amazing episode but uh it feels more like an outer limits or something yeah. oh yeah. It, yeah it's way more sci-fi than it is horror so i can understand like if you're watching tale we've said this before too if you're watching tales from the dark side you're not expecting like a sci-fi no. thing. Yep. No, and it's yeah. very sci-fi. There's not much horror. It's yeah. like sci-fi with like a splash of comedy because yeah. of Chuck McCann. And I think he himself is a great actor. And I wish he got more um, starring roles yeah. in things. Because again, like I mentioned in the beginning, he just does a lot of bit part stuff. Yeah. But I think he's really good in this. Yeah, he's fun to watch in this. I love, I like, I love the beginning when he's doing the Laurel and Hardy bit yeah. and he's doing the yeah. wizard. I'm just it like makes me happy to like watch him do that stuff. Because he's good at it. Yeah. I think it's funny as hell that he's like trying to get the secrets to fusion power from this thing and like what that means for us as a species. Right. Like he's and the then guy. just and then just fucks off. Yeah. Like what <laughs> happens yeah. after that? Our one bridge to alien yeah. technology. Yeah. Like it just left. The oh, world yes. flourishes, yeah. but he's going to a better place anyway. Uh Hofgosh, it's it, Hofgosh is kind of cool. He's like he's like if you took like uh the Mentanula mutants from uh this island earth yep. and put him in like yeah. a exposed a, brain, a little yeah. blue. And yeah. like and put him in like one of those jogging suits, like the, the bags that yeah. collect your sweat. Like that's what he kind of looks like. Right. Um I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. I again I will agree with Sean though. It's not the strongest episode to kick yeah. the series off with. No. And arguably, I think the, the the next one after this would have been a better choice. But yeah, we'll talk about we'll that. We'll talk shortly. about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that about covers it. I mean, it's like there's only so much we could pull apart and go into detail. But yeah, goofy episode. Fun to watch, I think. But yeah, everyone can see it and see what they think. But yeah, 100%. Either way, watch it. It's definitely memorable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, let us know in the comments uh, what you thought about this episode, if you liked it, if you didn't like it. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, do us a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, do us a favor and uh, leave us a five-star review if you dig it. But uh, until next time, I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. Tales from the Dark Side is always there. Waiting for us to watch it. Waiting for us to hit play. Until next time, try to find it on DVD and watch along with us.